Hi, everyone. We're excited to have you with us today and speak about grants management. My name is Eran from the social impact team at money.com. And today we're going to speak about how you can manage your grants pipeline from A to Z and easily generate reports. A bit about myself. My name is Eran Rosen. My role here at Monday.com is I build uh, solutions for nonprofits as part of our Equal Impact Initiative. I have more than 10 years experience <clears throat> in technology and nonprofits. And a fun fact about myself is that I love playing uh, Settlers of Catan. Our mission at Equal Impact Initiative is to work with nonprofits and help them solve their biggest challenges through technology. We do that by uh, our product, where we offer special pricing, solutions and training, such as this webinar today, for a volunteers program where we match volunteers to nonprofits that help with their unique expertise, and for our foundation, our philanthropic foundation that helps to provide more resources to help nonprofits succeed. Where you can find all of these things around uh, Equal Impact, you can go to our website, www.equalimpact.org, and you can see all of the services and different things that we offer there. The agenda for today, we're gonna to speak on how we can successfully manage our grants. I know this is a question that bothers uh, most of us here uh, in this webinar. We're gonna uh, do a, a walkthrough on our grants management uh, solution that we created in money.com. We're gonna show you how you can easily get started and uh, install this solution on your existing or new money account. And we're going to leave some time for questions and answers. Just before we start, uh, a bit of housekeeping. So at the end of the webinar, all of you will receive an email with a recording of it. If you have any questions during the webinar, please use our Q&A box. Our social impact team uh, members, Ken is here with us today, and Dania and Anton will be happy uh, to answer your questions during the webinar. And also, uh, at any given time, you can go to our template center and download our grants management solutions. Uh, it's free. So let's start. So what do we need in order to successfully manage our grants? First of all, we, want, we need the ability to centralize all of our grants workflows. Sometimes we have different workflows, multiple grants that will work with multiple team members and want everything centralized in the same place. We also need the ability to create, assign, and track tasks. Just imagine how many tasks or activities you have per one grant submission, and we need the ability to make sure that we're on top of it and we never miss a deadline again. We also need a holistic view that will give us an actionable insights, where is our team needs to focus now, and so on and so forth. Usually when we work on grants, we work as a team. So we also need the ability to collaborate with our different team members to make sure that we successfully submit our grants and also being awarded for them. We also need the ability to generate time-saving reports. And last but not least, we need the ability to customize uh, the, the solution to the way our nonprofit works. So we need to easily customize it to our needs. This is exactly what we're going to show in this walkthrough about our grants management solution. So let's start. Okay. I'm now in my uh, demomoney.com uh, account. In order to install the uh, um, grants management solution, what you will need to do is to go click here at, on add, go to choose from templates, go to a template center. In here, you will see the nonprofits uh, category. By the way, you have more dedicated nonprofit solutions in this category. So we feel free uh, to check them out as well. And you can go to our grants management solution and download it into your account. This is how it will look like after you will uh, download the solution to your account. We'll first start with a high level uh, overview of how it looks like. Then we're gonna do a drill down and actually showing the whole workflow since we start work on a new grant until it's being uh, awarded and all of the reporting around it. So when you're gonna download the solution, you're gonna have a one board and two dashboards. The first board 
is where you're going to manage most of your work. And as you can see, this board is breaking down into different groups. Each group is the phase of uh, each uh, grants. So grants that are still opportunities, grants that are currently in process, grants that have been submitted, grants that have been awarded, grants that we already received uh, uh, the grant, and grants that were declined. So in here, it's uh, segmented each group for each uh, phase uh, of the grant. You can see here that we can have the grant name. Here it's just uh, placeholder items, but any grant name you can uh, populate in the items name. The owner, who from my team will be uh, owning this grant, the status, what is the priority so we can focus on the higher priorities grants and make sure that we prioritize our work uh, efficiently. Tasks for each grant, we're gonna speak about in shortly, how we're gonna create this task and make sure that we meet, meet our deadlines. The timeline will be automatically created once we populate our tasks and timeline. We're gonna see it in a second. Our due date for submission, so we'll make sure that you won't miss the deadline uh, of uh, the grant. Which foundation is providing this grant? In this case, we just gave here like generic examples, but of course you can customize it to the actual foundations uh, you work with. The amount we've requested, the amount that was received, the awarded date and the payment date uh, of the grant itself, the designation of the grant, to which program in our nonprofit the grant is designated for. Again, here we provided like generic uh, labels, but of course you can customize it according to your programs. We're gonna see just in a second why it's important to create this segmentation and how it can easily create, uh, easily help you create uh, reports and actionable insights. We have like the, the POC name from uh, the foundation, email, phone, and we have more uh, formulas here that we're gonna see in a second. So this is the main board that you're gonna use. We have different views, we're gonna see them. Uh, we're gonna elaborate on it in just a sec. We have our grants dashboard. This is actually when you can see on a live basis how uh, we're performing uh, with our grants, how many uh, grants were received per program, per foundation, what is our grants pipeline? This is a high level view that will help us to see if there are any bottlenecks or if we need to focus on any part of the grants processes. We can see the performance of our team members, how well each one of our grants team members are performing. We can see a projection of when and how much per month we were expected to receive from grants. And we have a calendar where we can actually see uh, the different tasks and timelines on a calendar, whether it's uh, on a weekly basis or monthly basis. We're gonna see it in just a second. The last dashboard that we have is our learning center. To each solution that we create, we create a learning center. This is where you can find uh, uh, videos and knowledge-based articles to learn how to use this grant. Uh, you can share it with other uh, colleagues and team members to help them uh, onboard on this solution. We also have the, uh, a place where you can submit your feedback. Any iteration that we're, we're doing, any improvements that we're doing on our solutions is based on your feedback. So we're waiting to hear your feedback. It helps us provide uh, the solutions and features that you need. So you can see here more videos, anything that you need in order to successfully launch grants management solution uh, in your organization. So let's start. Let's take a new grant that uh, we have. Let's just give it a, a test name, grant test. And let's set it as an opportunity. Let's say that this is a new grant that our team is working on. So I'm gonna set this one as an opportunity. In a second, you'll see that the task will be automatically created. We're gonna wait just a second for the automation to work. Sometimes it takes time when you share your screen. You see it, so automatically these tasks are being created. I'm gonna show you how it's working and uh, how, how we do that. So let's say that this grant is on a medium priority. And let's say that uh, Lauren for my team, she's the owner of this grant, making sure that we submit it on time and 
owning all of the different tasks for this grant. As you can see, if I'll open up uh, the tasks in here, this is like actual tasks per grant. This is, by the way, also placeholder items that we've uh, created. You can also customize it if you have the same task, the same repeating task for each grant. In here, we, we chose four generic tasks when we want to start working on the grant, when we need to send a letter of intent, when do we need to submit application, and when do we need to send financial report. So let's say that now we start to uh, manage this uh, grant process. And we know that the submission due date is by the end of January. So if the submission due date is by the end of January, so let's start and break down this grant into its main tasks and make sure that everything is happening on time. And let's see how we can also collaborate with other team members that will help us um, submit this uh, uh, grant. OK, so let's say that Lauren is in, in charge in here. And to start working on the grant, because we need to submit it by the end of January, we want to start working it at least six, was six weeks in advance. So we're going to set a deadline to it. In here, Lauren can change the statuses, whether she started working on it done or she's stuck with it. So let's start uh, work on it. She can also add relevant files, whether it's files from uh, your Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive, or SharePoint. But you can also use Monday Work Doc. Let's say you want here um, to, to create the, um, uh, the grant draft. So you can actually create a Monday Work Doc and start to collaborate and, and creating the grant draft together. Grant draft, and you can, you can actually tag one another. I can tag Lauren. Please see this section, and so on and so forth. So you can actually use this Monday work doc and you will always have here a file, whether it's for your uh, grand draft, whether it's for your letter of intent or anything that you need. Later on, you can export it into PDF, but you don't have to use the Monday work doc. You can also use whether it's like an actual file, a word document or any other uh, uh, content writing tool that you're using. You can also add links in here. So let's say you want to add the grant submission link in here. So you can add the link in here and you would see it uh, very easily. It will be in handy to anyone that wants to see any information on this grant. Let's say, for example, we're going to take a grant by Gates Foundation, grant opportunities. So I can take this link, go in here and add submission link. Great, as, as you can see, it's very in handy. I have everything centralized in one place that will help our team streamline their processes and make sure that we work efficiently. Let's say that Lauren is also uh, in charge of sending the LOI and submitting the application by, as you know, sometimes grants have multiple team members working on it. So in this case, I'm gonna assign myself to send a financial report. Let's just build like a, a certain timeline to it, the deadlines, to each one of the tasks in here. So as you can see, we make sure that we finish all of the tasks that we need before the due date for submission. You can see that the timeline is automatically created by the different dates that I've created in here. We can see the statuses per each uh, task. So and by, and by the way, we can add more tasks. Let's say that now we have a, a new task that we have. I can easily add a new task in here it will be added into the timeline. And uh, we can either create the same uh, recurring task that will be automatically created for each grant and or add new custom uh, tasks per, uh, per grant. Just to show how the sub items automation works, we'll go in here. So you see we have an automation that when an item is created, create four sub items. This is the... Uh, this is the actual task that we've created. And in here, you can also customize it to the same recurring tasks you have for each grant. Okay, let's proceed. So we have our owner, we have our opportunity. We can choose which foundations we're working with. So whether we already have it in our list or whether it's a new foundation. So let's in this case, add the Gates Foundation. 
and I can choose the Gates Foundation. And let's say that we're going to request for 25. OK. We still don't know the amount received. We still don't know the awarded date and the payment date. But we know that we uh, submitted this grant in order to receive uh, uh, resources to, let's say, for program A in our, um, in our nonprofit. This is also like a generic label. You can customize it to your own needs. Let's fill here just for the sake of purpose a POC name, a number. So we'll have everything consolidated at the same place. Year awarded, this will be automatically populated when uh, we're going to, um, to, to, when the grant is going to be awarded. We're going to see how it's working in a second. So let's say that we, it's not an opportunity anymore. We, we decided to start working on this grant. We're going to click in process. It's going to automatically uh, move into the grants in process um, a group. And as we go along with, uh, with this grant process, let's say that this task is done. And let's say that also uh, Lauren have sent uh, the LOI. We're currently working on submitting the application. Uh, this is just an example. <clears throat> and also, every, any task that we see in here, we can also see in our calendar. So let's take an example in here. Let's go back to the main table. So let's say that Laura needs to send the LOI by 22nd of December. I will go into my calendar. We're in October. So you see it's automatically being updated, so I can start each week uh, or each day with my team, looking at the different tasks that we have as a team. And I can click in here and say, OK, by December 22nd, we need to send the LOI for this grant. Uh, it's also being colored by the different owners for each task. Or that December 23rd, I know that we need to start work on, on an additional grant, and so on and so forth. So we have this shared calendar where all our team can collaborate together. Let's go back to the main table. So let's say that we've submitted the application. So it means that now we can change the status into submitted. And now it will automatically going to be populated into the grant submitted group. And now there is a waiting period until whether our, uh, uh, our grants has been uh, approved or declined, or maybe there are other requirements that I need now to fulfill in order to uh, uh, receive this grant. So either it will go back into in process, or let's say that we're very uh, successful in submitting this grant, and we were awarded. So we're going to change it to awarded. So in here, we can see all of the awarded grants. We're going to add the actual amount that we, we received. Let's say in this case that we got the, the same amount that we asked for, and we received it in the end of January, just for example. And sometimes the payment date is not the same uh, as an, uh, the awarded date. So let's say that this grant we're going to receive only in mid-May 2022. As you can see here, it's already automatically populated the year which uh, uh, this grant has been awarded, which is 2022. We're going to see how it serves us in just a second. So as you can see, I can manage the full uh, cycle of a grant and the different tasks and collaborate with my team members in a single place. Another very important thing for me uh, to have when I manage multiple grants is the ability to also communicate with my team members. So let's say that I have a certain grant, let's say grant B, and now I want to discuss with Lauren for my team on something so I can tag Lauren and just, just an example, and Laurel will get a notification. Then we can actually uh, um, communicate in the context of a certain grant. It saves us time. We don't need multiple SMSs or multiple WhatsApps or multiple email threads where we lost uh, uh, the track on what, what we're discussing. We, we can do everything in the context of this, this particular grant. So this is an example how we can communicate. Let's see how 
uh, like some more views that we have in this table that will help us to manage to successfully manage the full grants pipeline that we have. So this is the table view that we can see in here. We can also have the Kanban view. Sometimes uh, it's you can you can manage it in this, so you can see it the actual like pipeline and different things that you have. You can also move grants around from this view. Let's say that grant C is now currently has been submitted. So this is something that I can easily do from here. Let's bring grant C back just for the sake of uh, the demo. And if I click on it, I can actually see all of the data regarding this grant. So sometimes when I want to have this high level view on what is the status of the grants pipeline, this is a very helpful view for you to have. We also have our calendar. In our calendar, our tasks and due dates for uh, grants will be automatically populated. So as we've, as we've mentioned, we can start each week by viewing the calendar, see which tasks do we have, making sure that we never miss a deadline again, and we're on top of all of our tasks. An additional view that we've created is the Gantt chart. In here, you are able to see uh, per uh, team member and per grant, what is the timeline for each grant, and, and I actually can see what are the different grants we're working uh, currently on simultaneously, and what is their also uh, what is their priority? So I can see it's colored by different prior priorities. So I can see that grant F is about to, to end, but I have uh, this test grant that is about to start. And if I want to see more information about each grant from the Gantt view, I can only cl I can click on it. And I can actually see what is the status of this grant and so on and so forth. So we ha you have different tools in order to make sure you're uh, dividing your workload accordingly, that you prioritize the different grants and so on and so forth. Everything that we do in here is automatically being updated in our grants dashboard. So let's say, for example, this grant test was awarded in January 31st, but we're gonna get the payment date only on 12 of May, 2022. So let's go to our grants dashboard. So first of all, all of our data is already being automatically updated. As you can see, the Gates Foundation uh, uh, bar has already be, uh, has been added in here because it's automatically being updated so I can always see the reports that I need. It's also the grants that received per program was uh, updated. What is the status of my grants pipeline? So I can make sure I, uh, I see if, there, if I have any bottlenecks, let's say that I have many, many grants and opportunities, but no, not of them is in process. So I can make sure that our team is working accordingly. I have the performance of my team members. I can see the projection uh, or the, the past uh, uh, receival of grants, but I can also see that in May, I'm about to receive a grant of $25,000. We also updated the calendar that you've seen before in the dashboard, so you can use it wherever it's comfortable for you. I can also very easily customize um, this dashboard to whether I have certain queries or certain things I need uh, to find, or whether I need to uh, fastly generate reports. So currently, let's say that we don't want to see that the grants received per program for all years. Let's say, let's say for example, that we want to uh, see the grants that we received only for 2022. So I can go into filter. I can choose the year. And now I can see only the programs that received grants for 2022. So see how easily I can create these reports. I can uh, find the data that I'm looking for just in a few clicks of a button. I can go also to any additional, we can clear this in here. Let's take another example. So let's say that we want to see um, <clears throat> the same grants received per program, but we want to see only from a certain uh, foundation. So let's go back to full screen. Let's filter it one more time. And let's say we want to see only from foundation D. So now I can see which uh, programs received uh, grants from uh, this particular foundation and so on and so forth. If there is an additional data that, that I want to track, I can easily create more widgets uh, in this dashboard. So let's say, for example, I want to track at the moment how many grants 
uh, each one of my team members is, is working on. So I can easily create a, a new chart widget. Let's see how we can easily uh, set it up. So we want the X axis to actually be a person column. And the Y axis to count items. So this means that these are all the grants that each one of us has uh, worked on or currently work on. If we see, if you want to see the uh, grants that are currently in process, we can add a filter in it and set status in process. And I see that currently Lorraine and myself, each one of us are currently working only on uh, one grant. So see how easily I can add more layers of data, more reporting tools in order to uh, successfully manage our grants pipeline. Let's go back just shortly into our grants management table. Another super powerful thing that we can do in here is uh, also create filtering uh, or sorting in this board. So let's say, for example, I want to see only the grants <clears throat> that I'm currently working on. So I can go into person and I can choose myself. And I can see only the grants that I either owning it or have a stop task on it. Let's clear this. If I want to see only the grants that I'm the owner of it, owner of them, sorry, I can go in here, set up owner. And as you can see, now I have a view that shows only the grants that I'm the owner of. So if you want to clear the noise, if you have multiple grants, it can be dozens or hundreds of grants you're working at the same time, you can use the filtering and sorting in order to create the views that will help you stay in focus and be more efficient. Let's clear this. Okay, just a quick wrap up. Let's see what we have. We have the grants management board where you ma actually manage your grants in the different phases. We have the grants dashboard when you can easily generate reports and see how well you perform. And we have the grants learning center where you, you have the different knowledge-based articles and videos that will help you successfully uh, implement this uh, in your own process. Now let's see how easily you can start uh, and use this grants management solution in your account. Let's open a new account. So whether you have an existing account, or whether you, uh, you're creating a new account, you can always go into add, choose from templates, go into a nonprofits category, go to grants management, then click on use template, whether you want to implement it in the current workspace you're at or to create a new workspace. In this case, let's create a new workspace. And in just a second, it will download all of the capabilities of this solution into your account. It's, uh, it's for free. You can use it uh, uh, in your different workflows. Let's wait just a second for it to download. All right, so as you can see, it, it's already being downloaded with, a, with the main board, with the dashboard and with the learning center. It has um, the item placeholder. So the first thing you would want to do is actually to take all of these items and delete them and add the actual data you have on your grants. You can either, either do it by adding them manually or either importing an Excel, you can import items from an Excel very easily and start managing uh, your grants in here. Another thing uh, that uh, you can do in order to set it up to uh, fit your exact needs. So let's, for example, create another grant test. So in here, you can also change the different foundations. You can create a list of the actual foundations we're working with. You can also change the purpose in here, like the designation of the grants, like uh, provide real, real na program names, real department names, and so on and so forth. And also regarding the automatically tasks that are being created, you can go into our automation center, go to automations, to the first automation that creates always the same sub items when you create an item. 
can edit this automation and actually change these sub items to the actual um, recurring task that you have for each grant. In this case, in this automation, you have four tasks for each grant. You can also create the same new automation and add as many tasks, recurring tax, tasks for each grant that you're uh, opening uh, uh, in your grants board. And that's it. You have your uh, grants. The dashboard will, uh, up, uh, will update it automatically as soon as you add the grants in here. And you also have the Grants Learning Center to help you successfully implement this solution. I see that we have a lot of interesting questions in here. So in just a sec, we'll start a live Q&A and we'll address all the questions uh, that you have. All right. Let's see, uh, Daniel, you want to share some of the questions that uh, people asked? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have one, um, Lily, when grant deliverables and reporting requirements be tracked under grants received subtasks? Sorry, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, absolutely. So would grant deliverables and reporting requ requirements be tracked under the grants received subtasks? Yeah, exactly. So in the subtasks in here, you can uh, add or create any deliverables you have per uh, uh, grant. And then you will be able to, to see that you're meeting your deadline for each uh, deliverable. Uh, regarding reporting, you can also add like reporting tasks uh, in here. Let's say that you have different uh, reports that you need to provide after the grant was awarded. So definitely you can create it uh, as a task, whether as a new and uh, manually custom made uh, task or whether create it as a recurring task in the automation that we just presented. Uh, by the way, uh, you can also see the different tasks in the calendar in here. And this way you, make you can make sure what are your deliverables, what are your next action items for each particular grant. Um, so we also have a question from Alexandra. Um, what if the grant award is split into two programs? The way we have it set up now, when I try to make a chart, the chart counts the full grant amount for each program. Mm -hmm. So you're saying like the grant, uh, the, the money that was received by the grant is divided into two different programs? Correct. Um, yeah. And then when they try to make a chart, the chart counts the full grant amount for each program, but they mm -hmm. want to separate it in two. Okay, so in this case, you have uh, two main options, whether it's to create like two separate items. Uh, let's say we have the same uh, grant is providing to each program. So each program would, would serve as an item. This will solve you like the duplication uh, in your chart. This is one way of doing it using uh, this solution. Another way of doing it, you, create, you can add an additional board uh, just for uh, like uh, payment dates. Uh, and in this place, you can also divide it. So in here, you will have like more high level and you can add a, a additional board regarding uh, uh, payment dates and to which uh, programs. It really depends on the complexity of your grants and how often it, it happens. Um, so we have a few questions about um, changing the years to fiscal year. Um, is that possible? Yeah, so definitely. Uh, you can either do it by uh, adding like another uh, status column or label, labeling system in here. So let's say I can add here like fiscal year. And in here actually like create, like create labels for which fiscal year I want to update and so on and so forth. This is like a, a straightforward way of doing it. And then when we do that, we can actually uh, segment the different uh, um, uh, grants that were received by fiscal year. Another option that we can do is uh, depending uh, uh, how your fiscal wo year works, it, it can vary between different uh, countries and different organizations even sometimes, but you can create a, a formula that says that uh, if a grant was awarded between these dates, so assign it to this uh, fiscal year. So these are the two options that uh, you have. Okay, um, so we have another question um, by 
Jock Bamba, um, do you have any solutions that allow you to track grant requirements? For instance, 20 signups needed, 20% increase in confidence. Uh, <laughs> that's a great question. Actually, we have uh, in the progress of creating a solution to track uh, grants performance and to see like the impact of the, uh, uh, each grant, such, such as uh, uh, what you've mentioned, but it's still uh, in early phases but we will release in the near future also a solution that will help you to track your grants and to see uh, the performance and also help you to report on uh, what was the impact that each grant has created. Awesome. Um, so do you have any recommendations for managing the reporting process after a grant has been awarded? Is this in the works as a follow-up? So currently, uh, it really depends on what is the complexity of uh, the reporting of your grants. Uh, I would recommend currently actually adding like uh, the reporting tasks as uh, subtasks in here, like actual tasks in this board. So let's say that you have a certain reporting task, you can actually add it in here and add an owner and date and so on and so forth to make sure you don't uh, miss a deadline. So this is what I, the first thing I would recommend. Uh, another option is to, uh, to create a different board just for reporting and to automatically populate any awarded grant in this new board. So let's say uh, we're gonna create a new board for grants reporting. And when a grant has been awarded, you can automatically populate uh, the grant there and manage a different reporting process in another board. So in this particular solution, uh, the first thing I would uh, offer is to add reporting tasks in the actual sub items in here. Awesome. Um, so we have a question from Anonymous. Um, if a grant moves from one group, for example, opportunity to submit it on one board, how can it automatically move on a related board? Hmm. Uh, or like uh, to also to move between groups in a different board? This is the question? Yes, it seems like that's what the question is. Okay, so uh, what you can do, like, um, I'm not sure if we have time to, to show it, but what you can do in case, like, uh, a certain grant is connected to, like, a certain item in this board is connected to another item in a different board, what you can do is you can create an automation that says that when this item in this board uh, um, status is changing, also change the status in the other board. And then you can create additional automation that when status changes in the other board, just move between groups. This way you can make sure that they are uh, being synced. Perfect. Uh, so we have a question from Alexandra. Um, we want to filter a chart based on specific set of dates, not just by year or last month. Is this possible? Let's go back to, to our chart. So in here you have uh, it, like uh, regarding the, the payment date, you can see it have like certain options in here, but also what you can do, you can set a condition. That's uh, for example, for payment date is between, and then I can pick up dates. So let's say we just want between September 27th to the end of year. And as you can see, like this is like uh, how I can do that. So in filters in each widget, you have either if you click on the filters itself, you have like the uh, uh, generic filters. If you click on this arrow, you have like more advanced filters that you can create different logics. And this is how you can uh, create this uh, timeline of, of filters that you want to create. Thank you. Um, we have one from Elmendra. Um, going back to my question about the maps view, is there a way to sum up all the grants that I have per country? Um, so if it's in the map view, are you able to see all the grants in each country? Let's go back in here. Uh, just re regarding this question, where do you hold the, the, the data of uh, from which country you received the grant? Is it like, a, um, a location column or a country column? 
Oh, so they're using the map view. So map view. Um, yeah. Let me ask. Oh, they're using the country column. The country column. Okay. So let's so show an example. So let's use the country column, and let's just uh, for the sake of this example, let's add. Let's say that all of this will be going to from the United States. And let's say that these are from Uruguay, just some countries we saw users from in the chat. And let's say these are from Canada. And some more grants that we received from Germany, just an example. So first of all, I have this new uh, column. So I can go into my grants dashboard and I can add a new widget. Let's create a chart widget. One second. Okay, let's now set up this widget so it will work as we want. Let's go to X axis. Let's choose country. Y axis, count items. As, as you can see, like just a few clicks of a button, I have a report where we received like the grants where they're from. And I can also apply filters. Let's say I want to see only the grants that were being actually uh, awarded or received. So let's click awarded and received. So now I have a grant of all of the awarded and received grants that I have. You can see that uh, Canada wins big, big time in this case. Um, they also wanna see what it looks like on the map view as well. On the map view? Yeah. Yeah, so in order like to populate, uh, uh, to populate data on a map view, map view, you will need a location column. So in this case, you will need a location column. And once you uh, uh, enter um, addresses in this column, you will be able to uh, see the, the, the map view. Let's just bring an example. Okay. Just some random places from New York. Okay, just an example. Uh, and if now I want to add a map view, I can go in here. So as you can see, first of all, I have these exact addresses of the different grants that I've uh, added. In here, you see I have, and I can actually view the item. And in regards to the country column, if I zoom out, you see that I can see that I have five, uh, uh, five, con five grants from the, from, uh, the United States. And uh, let's see, I'm not sure that is populating correctly. Let's see. Yeah, so it looks like the country column wouldn't be your best bet in order to show it on a map view. Uh, if you want to see something on a map view, you should use like the location column and then it will populate it appropriately. Because I see now the country column is not showing like, the right data for it. Thank you. Um, so we have a question from Lydia. Is it possible to have some kind of archive where we can see all past grants that have closed? Definitely. Uh, what, what I would offer uh, in this case, um, by the way, any Monday board, it depends on your plan, but uh, can hold at least of 10,000 uh, items in each particular board. If you're applying to more 10,000 uh, grants in, in a few years, so maybe this one wouldn't be the solution for you, but I assume that for most nonprofits, it will be a suitable solution. So what I would offer in this case is to actually add another group Let's call it archived. 
I can move it to the bottom of this solution. And I can actually move items into this uh, group. And whenever I want to search for a certain, uh, certain archives uh, grant, whether I want to, uh, to, uh, to archive past years and so on and so forth, so I can do that there. Just uh, be minded that if you're taking, like for example, if you're moving items from the awarded group into a different group, so it will affect your dashboards. So if this solution is not working for you, like this approach won't work for you, another option is to just create another board of archived uh, grants and set an automation that every time a grant is being received, create an item in archive. So this is where you can also like uh, create uh, another archive uh, methodology. Great, thank you. Um, we have a question from Mary. Um, would it make more sense to add a group of grants awarded that have outstanding deliverables like reports rather than keeping them in the grants awarded group? Uh, you can, that's uh, one approach uh, to handle it. Uh, another thing that uh, maybe uh, I would offer is in order not to, uh, to change the structure of how the data is being populated in a dashboard, you can also add another column. Let's say in, in here, let's add a status column and say report. And in here, we can segment it into yes or no, just an example. And let's say that these two reports need a report. And we already have our holiday theme in our uh, status column. Uh, <laughs> so in this case, if I want to see to which grants I want to report, I can filter it. Let's create a filter and say, show me only grants that needs reporting. And now I'm, I can create a view for this and I see, uh, by the way, let's actually create a view, save as new view. And let's call it grants for reporting. And as you can see, I have a new view where I can see only the grants I need to submit reports for. So this is uh, something I can do and it won't affect the structure of this solution. You can also do it uh, opening up a new group, just take in mind that moving items between group can, uh, it, needs that, it means that you need to modify how your dash dashboards are populating the data from this solution. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have another question, an anonymous. Um, can the count the country column be customized to counties or states? Mm. Uh, so what you can do in, in in that case, you can either add a, like you can add a, a drop down column and then just list uh, counties there, and then you can populate it uh, in there. So let's say. Let's go back in here. Uh, so in the country column, like you can only populate uh, countries. In the location column, you can uh, populate uh, uh, addresses, but if you want also to show segmentation on a, on a county level, so what I would offer is you can add a, a drop-down column. And in here, just an example. and so on and so forth. And then you can segment them. And in this case, you will be able to see data also on a county level. I would strongly recommend for any new layer of data that you want to add to your uh, solution is uh, not to avoid of using uh, text columns because when you're gonna use text columns, it's gonna be uh, impossible for you to actually show data on it that is going to be accurate. So your go-to columns would be either status column or either uh, drop-down columns in order to create more smart segmentations and data reporting. Great, thank you. Um, so we have a question from Manucha. Um, is there another dashboard with a list of all the foundations where you can add background, history, et cetera, with the foundation and keep everything centralized there? Hmm. That's a great question. Um, when we created this solution, we had uh, this thought uh, how complicated to do that or how to simplify it. Uh, so we, we found something in between. Uh, what I would offer for this particular case 
is to open a new board, let's call it a foundations board, uh, where you can have all of the data that you have per, per foundation. And in here, you can connect each item to the foundations board, and then this way you will have everything consolidated in, a one, in one place. Meaning that, let's say that grant D and grant F both are part of uh, foundation A, if you will have another foundations board, you can connect these items into the foundations board. And in this way, you will have this high level view per foundation. This is definitely doable. It's not in the uh, like uh, out of the box solution in this, but you can definitely add it as an add-on for the solution. Uh, by the way, if you remember, we discussed that one of the needs is to easily customize the solution for uh, your non-profit needs. This is just one of example how you can take it further on and use it uh, to best fit your workflows. Thank you so much. Um, so we have a question from Katie. Um, can we set up task sub-items by category? We have many different funders with different requirements. Some have as many 15 different reports due over the life of the grant. Um, others may have five total tasks. So basically in question, can we set up different task sub-items by category? That's a great question. Uh, so uh, currently, like in the out-of-the-box uh, flow that we've created, the trigger for creating tasks is uh, creation of a new item. Let's go back in the automation in here. So you see when an item is created, create four sub-items. So this is the trigger, uh, uh, how we set up uh, this one. But if you want to segment different tasks to different kinds of uh, foundations or different kinds of grant types, we can change uh, the, the trigger for this. And let's say, just for example, let's create here another status column. Let's call it grant type. And let's say in here I have A, B, and C. And what you can do is you can create an automation that says when grant type changes to A, then create these five or six or seven tasks. When grant types changes to B, then create a, a different kind of task. So this is why how you can segment the creation of recurring tasks according to a grant type or different uh, kind of trigger. Just make sure to turn off this automation and create the automation uh, that you would want uh, to do in order to create uh, different kinds of recurring tasks. Thank you. Um, so we have an anonymous question. How do you connect the foundation board, general info board with this board? Um, as you mentioned in the response to somebody else's question. So basically how to connect two boards. Amazing. Uh, so um, we don't have uh, much time left. We're gonna just show a very quick example. And uh, all right. So let's say that we're gonna create foundations board. Okay, let's ignore the structure of this board. Let's just do it fast so we can do it on time. So let's say we have foundation A, we have foundation B. Sorry for the misspelling, but let's go for it very fast. We don't need all of these columns just for the sake of the example. Okay, now I want to connect this board with the other board. So let's choose connect boards column, select boards. Let's choose grants management. And in here I can create, decide if I want to create a two-way connection or just a one-way connection. In this case, let's create a two-way connection. Okay, you can later on create mirror boards, but let's go back into grants management. Let's now filter all foundation A grants. One second. Now, sorry. Okay. Let's filter again all Foundation A grants. Now I can select all of these grants. 
go to connect boards item, choose foundation A. And if I'll go to the foundations board, first of all, in a second, I will see all of these grants connected to this. And I can also start populate, mirroring data from these grants. I can also create uh, an, an, an item card that will show me anything I want from these boards. Let's just show an example. So as you can see, I'm now in Foundations A board and I can see all of the different grants that are related to this uh, foundation. Like I can create this high level view. Again, I would do it more robustly, but this is just on a very high level. I see that we're running out of time. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for joining today from all around the world. We hope that you're gonna use this uh, grants management solution that help you succeed in, uh, in your grants applications. We're looking forward to hear your feedback on how we can improve and what else you need uh, from our team. And we invite you uh, to come and visit us at uh, www.equalimpact.org and see the other services that we offer for non-profits to help you succeed. Uh, that's it. Good evening from Tel Aviv. We're very excited to have you all here. Thank you very much.